What you saw was a people's platform and a people's campaign that actually challenged the corporate control of the narrative and using technology, the open internet, using your sweat equity and interest to insert ourselves into a debate to shift the power in this country. And as Dr. Jill Stein says, it's in our hands. And with that, I want to welcome back to the stage, Dr. Dr. Jill Stein. <laughs> Thank you. So I guess um, I'm going to hear your questions. And again, as David said, send me your questions at hashtag Hey Jill, and I just have to give a big thank you to David Cobb and a thank you to all of our staff for our campaign and to Ajamu Baraka who is here tonight with me and to his staff as well. So I just want to give a big thank you, if I could, another round of applause for all the great work you guys are doing. And send me your questions. I will give a lightning round uh, reply to them because I understand Twitter gives me exactly 30 seconds and no more. So these are going to be really quick replies. Okay, uh, so uh, um, our first question uh, is uh, actually a quote and uh, we'd like you to talk about that quote. Um, that one is from Martin Luther King when, when he says, when there is injustice anywhere, it is a threat to justice everywhere. What does that mean to you? That means that we must work together uh, to fight for racial justice and social justice and climate justice uh, and for peace and women's justice. Uh, at the end of the day, all justice runs together, but together we are absolutely unstoppable. Um, another question is from Kyra L. Moore, who says, it would, would it cost less to write off all student loan debt than the Wall Street bailout cost? Great question. Yes, it costs far less. So we came up with $16 trillion to bail out Wall Street. What we need to bail out uh, student loan debtors is $1.3 trillion. We can certainly come up with that money. There is no more important investment for our future and for our society than our younger generation. This one is from Shelby, who says, Hey Jill, what are your opinions and stances on NAFTA and the TPP? Um, on NAFTA, it was a disaster that sent our jobs overseas and depressed wages here at home. The TPP is even worse. Uh, it is NAFTA on steroids. Not only, you know, same thing for our jobs and our wages, but it also creates this uh, investor state dispute system uh, that puts our laws and our regulations at the mercy of international corporations. So it is a disaster. We must stop it. Um, we also have a, a question called, um, hey Jill, technology is estimated to eliminate 30% of jobs by the end of the next decade. Is the solution a basic universal income? Uh, yes, absolutely. A universal basic income is one way uh, to approach this. Another is uh, through a Green New Deal, which also uh, creates the right to a job, a good job that helps us meet this emergency of climate change. Right now, we're in an all-hands-on-deck situation. So we need, we need everybody right now. That uh, making uh, workers obsolete is not uh, in sight if you actually consider the climate change and the transformation we need to accomplish uh, starting right now. Okay, all right, so I'm just getting a note here to remind you to please share your live stream on Facebook and on Twitter so that we can get the word out and build this bigger movement for uh, justice and for the transformation that we urgently need and that we deserve. for you in a minute. Um, okay, great. Um, this one is 
from uh, Will O'Regan, who said, uh, this was obviously a huge success tonight in the debate. Were you, you worried you would be under arrest when you went to Hofstra? Would you do this again? Um, absolutely, I would do this again, but I hope the next time that we are actually on the debate stage. So don't let them tell you that resistance is futile or that our struggle for democracy and justice is over. It's only just begun. We deserve to be on that debate stage and to have a debate that's heard by all of the American people. And uh, I encourage you to share your live stream on Facebook and Twitter and let's get the word out to as many people as possible. Our next question is from Manny Ortiz, who says, Hey Jill, if you become our POTUS, what kind of policies would you implement to help reverse climate change? Thank you, uh, Manny. So number one is we need to put an immediate ban on all new fossil fuel infrastructure. We cannot afford a single more pipeline. Uh, we are facing a disaster situation right now with the fossil fuels that we have. Number two is that we need to phase them out, all fossil fuels, by the year 2030 in time to actually stop the climate catastrophe that's uh, barreling down on us right now. Thank you. Um, so, uh, the next question uh, will be from uh, S. K uh, Susie Kais, who says, Hey Jill, how do you plan to help our public schools and special education programs? Great. Uh, two very important questions. We need to fully fund our public schools, including our special education programs. We need small classroom size. We need far more teachers. We need to end high stakes testing, which is being used as an excuse to close down poor schools. It's essentially an indicator of poverty. Uh, we need to address poverty in and of itself. Uh, but in this classroom, we need to teach to the whole student for lifetime learning and to bring back music creation and art. Our next question is from Monet Lamont, who says, Hey Jill, what is your plan to work with the Black Lives Matter movement to end police brutality? Uh, thank you, uh, Moniz. The Black Lives Matter movement is leading the charge, and they're coming up with very important uh, policy solutions uh, that I talked about during the debate, and that includes um, Civilian review boards with the power to hire and fire and also the power of subpoena, as well as independent investigators, changing the culture of policing and ending the militarization and providing funds for the engagement of young people. Um, our next uh, question is from Marcy Angelis, who says, could you please elaborate on your support of indigenous rights for undecided native voters? Thank you. Yes, so I was recently uh, standing with the uh, Standing Rock Sioux in North Dakota um, because their work is critical and really leads the way with enormous courage and vision. We support treaty rights. Um, my campaign supports treaty rights, uh, which are essential, and those treaty rights have been uh, ignored and discarded. We also support reparations for the uh, lands that have been taken from indigenous people. Okay. Great. Um, our next question is from A.T. Spears, who says, Hey, Jill, can you talk to us about the deregulation of corporate America and how you view true democracy in the United States? Great. So the deregulation of corporate America is what brought us the Wall Street meltdown. Uh, deregulation of corporate America brought us the consolidation of insurance companies so that prices go up and quality goes down. It also led to the consolidation of uh, of media companies as well. We need to bring back antitrust laws so that we can break up these consolidated corporations that again uh, are uh, are ripping us off, are charging us higher prices, and have lost their uh, creativity um, as a rule as they become bigger. Our next question is uh, from uh, uh, Kyra L. Moore, who says, Hey Jill, does it make sense that we sold $150 billion of weapons to the Saudis this year? Um, I think that figure's a little high. Um, uh, I'm not sure. We did sell them billions of dollars this year, and we've sold them over $100 billion uh, over the last uh, 10 years, which uh, is 
uh, would not happen under a Stein and Baraka administration. The Saudis are violating uh, human rights, committing war crimes. Uh, they should not be sold uh, weapons on that basis, and those criteria should be applied across the board. Great. Um, our next question is from uh, Felicia Hogan, who says, Hey, Jill, what is your opinion on LGBT rights? LGBT rights need to be supported. I was actually the first uh, governor candidate in Massachusetts to support equal marriage at a time when the Democrats were trying to figure out whether they supported civil unions. So we believe that uh, discrimination is, um, uh, is unconscionable and should not be allowed, whether on the basis of sexual preference or gender identity or uh, race or religion for that matter. Human rights are human rights and need to be supported and enforced in the workplace. Um, our next question is uh, from, uh, well, uh, a person named Jill Not Hill, <laughs> who says, hey, Jill, would you close Gitmo on day one? Uh, I would certainly work to do that. And I would um, fight vigorously uh, to have all of the remaining prisoners moved uh, out of Gitmo and to shut down this facility, which is a... Um, you know, which is a real uh, national scandal, an abuse of human rights, and a source of great tension internationally for the uh, uh, torture and uh, human rights violations that are taking place at Gitmo. Our next question is from Jim Peterson, who says, what are your plans to help the homeless, especially homeless vets? Great question, uh, Jim. There's so much that we can do for the homeless, and there's so much we can do for vets. Uh, we have more empty homes right now than we have homeless people. So we need to bring those homes back into use. We can put people to work and create jobs by rehabbing those homes uh, where necessary so that they again become habitable. And uh, we need to put communities back in charge of their housing rather than developers who are building housing for profit. We need to ensure we have housing for people. Our next question is, um, oops, um, hold on. <laughs> Uh, our next question is from um, David D. Phillips, who says, Hey, Jill, do you have any suggestions moving forward as to how we might get rid of the Commission on Presidential Debates, or at least its arbitrary 15% rule? We do need to get rid of the arbitrary Commission on Presidential Debates and its intentional use of the 15% rule to silence political opposition. In the words of the League of Women Voters, this commission is a fraud being perpetrated on the American voter. The Democratic and Republican parties should not be put in charge of managing and essentially censoring the debate. We need to challenge their legitimacy, which is what our campaign is doing. I encourage you to support this movement to end the Commission on Presidential Debates. Great. Our next question is from Paul Driver, who says, Hey, Jill, what are your thoughts on worker co-ops? Thanks, Paul. Uh, worker co-ops are uh, essential. They're a very important part of the economy. Uh, we would establish uh, a, an office of the cooperative economy in order to help uh, teach people and provide the skills for establishing uh, worker cooperatives. We would make funding available to them because right now it's very hard for them uh, to get the capital they need in order to start up. This is an important sector of the economy that we need to support. Um, the next two questions I'm going to combine. The first one is from Daniel Dye, who says, do you think Obamacare was a good idea? And we're going to combine that with um, a, a question from Jameson Weaver, who says, hey, Jill, what would you do to improve our health care system in the United States? So um, to improve the health care system in the United States, we need health care for people, not for profit. Uh, there were some good things that happened under Obamacare, but there were some very bad things as well. It gave a monopoly, essentially, to insurance companies and to pharmaceutical companies, which are ripping us off for almost half a trillion dollars a year. We need an improved Medicare for all system to put our health care dollars into health care. Our next question is from Jane Doe, who says, Hey, Jill, would you pardon Chelsea Manning? 
Uh, the answer is very simple. Yes, Chelsea Manning is a hero for exposing uh, the crimes and the lies uh, and the international law violations uh, that was being committed by our government in our name. We deserve to know uh, what our government is doing, especially by way of war and war crimes, uh, and he enabled us to stop it. So he should be, I'm sorry, she should be, um, uh, pardoned and brought back a hero. Um, our next question is from Monica, who says, Hey, Jill, if you were elected, what would you tackle in the first 100 days? What we could tackle very quickly, in fact, is to break up the big banks by using um, Bill Black's uh, recommended um, uh, initiatives to uh, break them up. Bill Black, who wrote the book, The Best Way to Rob a Bank uh, is to Own One. Uh, we would also instruct the Drug Enforcement Agency to use science and to take marijuana and hemp off of the list of scheduled substances. Our next question is from Mindy Smith, who is running as a Green in California. And her question says, talk about ranked choice voting. How does it work? Thank you, Mindy, for bringing that up. Ranked choice voting, very important. Anybody who's worried about spoiling the election, and you're probably you know, in touch with people who are uh, complaining about that. We have a solution. It's just fix the voting system. Uh, the solution to a compromised democracy is not less democracy. <laughs> Silencing the voices of political opposition is not democracy, that's tyranny. We need ranked choice voting. It lets you rank your choices. If your first loses, your vote's reassigned to your second choice. Our next question is from Domenico Di Salvo, who says, Hey, Jill, how do we get more congressional support for the party and get congresspeople who support your vision of the future? The good news, Domenico, is that there are scores of Greens who are running for Congress right now. And one of the things our campaign is doing is lifting the veil and shining the light on these wonderful down-ballot candidates, not only for Congress, but at all levels of government. And uh, get out and support them, work for them. Uh, we need to bring them into Congress at the same time that we are heading for the White House. And the more of us that go to D.C., the sooner we will get it cleaned up. Thank you. Our next question is from Lori Lamb, who says, Hey, Jill, can you speak about Bernie Sanders supporters and if they are welcome to your campaign? Yes, and let me give a big uh, welcome and thank you to all of the Bernie supporters uh, who stood up for a better vision of America that works for working people and who refused to be silenced or intimidated by the Democratic Party. So thank you for building this movement and thank you for continuing this movement. Uh, this is a very powerful coalition for the Bernie passion to be meeting the Green Party infrastructure. Together we're unstoppable. Our next question is from Ashley Nicole, who says, Hey, Jill, what are your plans to improve mental health availability as president? Mental health. Mental health is absolutely critical. It should be a routine part of uh, health insurance, and it would be covered completely uh, under a improved Medicare for All system, which is what we are supporting. We should be covered head to toe, cradle to grave, not only physical health, but mental health. Uh, as well as reproductive health, your pharmaceuticals, your hearing aid, whatever you need, this should be covered. Mental health is critical to our health. Our next question uh, is uh, from the Kobe system, who says, what is your stance on the war on drugs? Uh, the war on drugs is a... Um, uh, is a very is a failure. <laughs> it's a failure, and it's a very bad thing. Uh, I will end the war on drugs. We will treat uh, drug use as a health issue, not as a criminal issue. And the first step is to legalize marijuana and hemp, uh, and to actually pardon all those people who are wrongly incarcerated in the first place for using a substance which is actually safer than alcohol and nicotine. Our next question is from Sean C. Gay, who says, Hey, Jill, how can we reclaim the institution of scientific research from undue corporate interest? Great. Uh, wonderful question, Sean. How can we get corporate interests out of the business of defining our uh, 
our research institutions and our research goals. Um, there are many ways. Uh, for one thing, we need to stop the revolving door between our regulatory agencies and the corporations they're supposed to be regulating. Also, we need to get money out of politics, and that's not so hard to do. It's time for a fully publicly financed system of elections and to free the media so the airwaves uh, are free for our use. Our next question is from Raghu, and he says, hey, Jill. Can you address food, agriculture, and farmers and what you would do? So uh, we need to restore our farming economy, our farming families, our farming communities, and to take back the institution of farming from uh, corporate America, which has degraded it, which has poisoned it, which has created a food system, an industrial food system that is bad for farmers, farm workers, communities, uh, the planet, and consumers who are eating it. We need a healthy, organic, and sustainable food system. Um, our next question here is from Nkoku Yokohama, who says, hey, Jill, what would you do to make a path to citizenship easier for immigrants like myself? Great. Um, so we need a welcoming path to citizenship for the immigrants who've actually been at the foundation of our economies, our community, uh, and our uh, culture. And um, we need to uh, address the crisis of immigration by stopping uh, the things that are causing it in the first place, namely NAFTA, the war on drugs, and by invading other countries and undermining democracies. Our next question is from, from Danielle Myers, who says, hey, Jill, how will you help Puerto Rico? Uh, so Puerto Rico needs to be liberated from the colonial status uh, that has been inflicted on it for uh, centuries. Yes. And immediately, the first step uh, is for us to bail out uh, Puerto Rico uh, as a repayment for the incredible resources, uh, um, uh, human skills and labor that have been extracted from Puerto Rico uh, by uh, U.S. corporations that have been able to relocate there. Our next question is from Steve Alish, who says, Hey, Jill, do you support publicly financed elections, and how would you make that happen? Yes, we need publicly financed elections. Hand in hand, we also need to liberate the airwaves, because the minute uh, candidates have free access to the public airwaves, then the cost of campaigning takes a nosedive, and then it's very affordable for us to have publicly funded elections. And I would get private money, whether it is the money of, of a billionaire funding himself, or the money of billionaires funding their candidates to do work for them. We need to get private money out so we can get the people back in. Um, and our next question, it comes from Memphis, and, it's, and they say, hey, Jill, what can we do to keep the revolution going after the election? Thank you. Um, we need to stick together and to stay together because the work has only be begun. Whether we're in the White House or whether we are outside of the White House, we are building and we've taken an incredible leap forward in this election and thanks to all of you for making that so. I think we haven't seen yet how far we can go in this election because we're just beginning to see the word spreading, especially among uh, millennials who are really ready for a change. So hold on to your hat, let's see where it goes, and let's stay in touch. Jonathan Alonzo asks, hey Jill, would you free Leonard Peltier? Uh, yes, I would uh, free Leonard Peltier and other uh, political prisoners as well, including um, uh, Mumia, Abu Jamal, uh, Chelsea Manning, um, uh, Julian Assange, uh, and especially Reverend Edward Pinckney, uh, who is imprisoned in uh, Benton Harbor, um, Michigan, where he was imprisoned basically for fighting back against the takeover of Benton Harbor by the Whirlpool Corporation. Mike Ridgway asks, hey Jill, what is your position on constantly sending more and more money to support Israel's wars while our people go hungry? Well, exactly. I mean, not only that it is, these wars are 
you know, these wars are bankrupting uh, America, but also that this is a very uh, unconscionable thing to do. We're calling for an even-handed foreign policy where we stop supporting governments, even our allies, who are violating international law and human rights, as Israel is doing, uh, through occupation, through home demolitions, through assassination programs, uh, collective punishment, disproportional force, etc. Tom Wenzel asks, uh, do you agree with Bernie's economists like Stephanie Kelton that we have the money for free universities? Oh, absolutely, uh, we do. Um, and we know that for every dollar we put in to higher education, we get back $7 in return. So it pays for itself. What better investment is there than in the education uh, of our younger generation? This is long overdue. Our next question is from Jimmy Padilla, who says, Hey, Jill, please tell us how you will help the undocumented immigrants that are living in this country. So let me say, not only do we need a welcoming path to citizenship, we need to put an immediate end to the deportations, the detentions, and the night raids. The, uh, the Republicans have shown themselves to be the party of hate and fear, but the Democrats are the party of deportation and detention. So the Green Party offers a new way forward uh, with a welcoming path to citizenship and respecting the refugees who've come here fleeing our misguided policies. We need to end those policies. Steel City for Stein asks, hey Jill, what will you do to make sure politicians and bankers that break the law are held accountable for their crimes? Well, exactly. Uh, the first thing that we need to do is to uh, elect uh, representatives who are not being bankrolled by those very banks. And, um, you know, Hillary Clinton, we certainly know about her sponsorship by the banks. Uh, the Republican Party uh, technically has plenty of sponsorship from them as well. So we need to, you know, put our money where our mouth is and uh, support a politics of integrity that will do the right thing. We have time for about three more questions. So the first comes from Joey, who says, hey, Jill, what factors would you consider in choosing a potential Supreme Court justice? Um, we need a Supreme Court justice who is free from conflicts of interest, from uh, historical connections to the various predatory corporate interests that have you know, compromised our court system as well as our political system. We need a Supreme Court justice who will stand up for women's rights, for immigrant rights, uh, for human rights, and who will get money out of politics and oppose uh, Citizens United and render corporations uh, not human beings. <laughs> Um, okay, our next question comes from Cyrene Cray, who says, Hey Jill, what are some of your policies regarding animal rights and animal welfare in the United States? So maybe the most important thing we can do is to end the combined uh, animal feeding uh, operations, the CAFOs, which are uh, inhumane and which are a disaster for the environment and also which produce food that has some um, rather untoward things added to it, in particular high levels of antibiotics, uh, because when the animals are so crowded together, it's not good for them. Uh, they pollute our water supplies uh, and our land and so on. So we need to end that and get back to a healthy uh, system of animal husbandry, healthy and humane. Jeffrey Stokes asks this question. Hey Jill, what is your policy for Social Security? Uh, we need to take the cap off of the Social Security contributions, because right now it's very regressive, uh, so that those contributions not only continue up to the top of the income level, but actually it should be progressive, so that the contribution increases uh, proportionally at higher levels of the income. Uh, stream. That way we can be sure that Social Security, uh, we can be expanding it, not worry about uh, having to contract it. And our last question, perhaps one of the most important questions we'll get in this election, comes from AKA The Snake, who says, Hey Jill, how can we end the two-party trap? By uh, supporting 
the alternative to the two party trap, which is independent, uh, principled politics through the Green Party, uh, which is collaborating with many of the smaller independent progressive and socialist parties. We need to work together to be the strong, unstoppable force that we actually are. We need to stand up and stand strong. We do have the numbers. We have the values of the American people at heart. It's time to stand up and actually take our future back into our own hands. Would you like to say anything? <laughs> So, ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Jill Stein. And if you, I, I just got, I just got word. Not one million, I can tell you. Two million people participated in this process. Two point eight million. We gonna do this again. Tune in on October fourth. Ajamu Baraka, vice presidential candidate. Come on up Come here, on up Ajamu. Here, Ajamu. Ajamu. Ajamu Baraka. We are going to do this again. I want you to join us, Ajamu Baraka, Vice Presidential nominee. We're going to do this again, coming to you from Richmond, Virginia. Go to that website, jill2016.com. We need you to donate. We need you to volunteer. We need you to become organizers on social media yourself, right? Don't hate the media. Become the media. Peace, y'all.